Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at a fairly new bourbon to the scene. That is the Joseph Magnus Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Now the Joseph Magnus Bourbon and the Joseph Magnus Distillery are both new because that distillery is the first one in Washington DC since Prohibition. It is founded last year in 2015 by Jimmy Turner. And Jimmy Turner, and the whole reason this whole came about was because Joseph Magnus was his great grandfather. He was a blender, distiller, rectifier in Cincinnati back in the late 1800s, 1892 to be exact. And that Magnus bourbon, there was a single bottle that kind of got passed down from family member to family member through the generations until Jimmy Turner stumbled upon it. And when he found that bottle, he actually started to want to find out more. So he started acquiring more and more Magnus bourbon bottles that were unfortunately empty. But finally, some of his family members were able to acquire a full bottle. So they gave that to him. He actually assembled a really good group of people to taste this with. Uh, they included like Dave Shurick, who was the former distiller at uh, Woodford Reserve, uh, Nancy Fraley, or Nancy the Nose Fraley, who is the director of research for the American Distilling Institute. He got together with Richard Wolf, who was the former VP and GM of Buffalo Trace Distillery. And he got together with Brett Thompson, who is a co-owner of uh, Alexandria's Pork Barrel Barbecue uh, there in that area. All of them huge into spirits. All right. So they got together. They very carefully took a syringe, went in through the top of that 100 plus year old bourbon, pulled some out to sample. And when they all tasted it, they all knew right away, wow, you know, Joseph Magnus, he was on to something back then. Now, uh, Nancy Fraley actually took some back to the lab to do a little more further research on it. And what they come to find out is they believe that uh, Joseph Magnus was taking his bourbon and then finishing it in sherry barrels. And so that's how come when they decided they wanted to recreate this bourbon, or at least get it as close to possible as they could to that original bourbon, they knew they had to use some kind of sherry barrels. Now, they went a step beyond that because not only did they use Oloroso sherry casks to age bourbon, but they used Pedro Jimenez sherry casks and they used cognac barrels as well. So three different types of maturation or finishing techniques are going on to create this singular bourbon. All right, so how did they come across this or how did they actually get this into the bottle? Well, that was kind of the responsibility of Richard Wolf with his Buffalo Trace connections. He went on a search for the perfect bourbon barrel to find, you know, to use as the base whiskey. So upon searching in some of these Kentucky Rick houses, he came across a single barrel of eight year old bourbon that was actually distilled in MGP. So while it was maturing for eight years in Kentucky, it was an MGP or Indiana distillate. All right. They sourced that barrel. They brought it back to Washington, D.C. They put some of it in that Oloroso sherry barrel. They put some of it in the PX sherry and some of the cognac sherry and let it mature and finish for about another five to eight months, somewhere in there. Once they felt it was ready, they proportioned it out. They felt, you know, you don't want to go too much cognac or too much PX and you definitely want to go too much, um, you know, Oloroso, maybe darken things up too much. But they were very careful. And I'm sure Nancy Fraley was an intricate part in this. And once they came across the perfect blend, that's what you have right here. Each batch is going to be individually numbered. This happens to be batch one, bottle 292 of 892. And the thing to note about this bottle is, A, it looks fairly impressive on the shelf. I mean, this is not a cheap bottle. You could have gone and gone with any other bottle that, you know, you see out on the shelves. But this is a custom bottle. It's nice, long scallops going down the neck. Good you know, traditional shape to it, heavy glass bottom, even has like uh, beveled edges at the bottom all the way around. And on the back, it even has the family crest. And I say the family crest, even though it was technically, um, Jimmy Turner's brother has a ring with that stamp on it that was given to him by his great grandfather, Joseph Magnus, who was given it by his great grandfather, Abraham Alexander Sr who was an immigrant to the U.S. back in 1763. So that is maybe not the family crest going all the way back, but we know Abraham Alexander Sr. had it, and maybe it was a use of his job or his own personal seal. That's why it's on the bottle. It's actually a lion holding an oak branch with a quiver of six arrows behind him. Okay, 
So I'm just saying all that just to let you know. I mean, a lot of detail went into each and every bottle of this stuff. Um, let's go ahead and get to the nosing, all right? Deep red hue, as you can see, to the traditional bourbon color. Nice, long, developing legs. Wow, you can, you can tell that's going to be sweet because they're very slowly developing. All right. But on the nose, rich red fruit characters just popping out. A mix of fresh red berries, dried red fruits. A lot of cherries coming through. Dried, dried and fresh. Cinnamon and clove. Mulling spices. I get a little bit of that dried orange peel aspect to it as well. Dates, figs, plums, little hint of raisins, but not very much. Oh, that cinnamon and clove, pretty intense right there on the nose. But the, the crazy thing is, it's only 100 proof. You can definitely get very, very deep in this glass, but I'm trying to, trying to find those different levels of those aromatics and that cinnamon, when I hit that one level, that cinnamon was right there in the nose. Ah, oh, there it is, tobacco leaf. You can actually get that very, very easily. You can get this tobacco leaf coming out of this glass. Chocolates. What else am I finding in there? Maybe a hint of... Is that a hint of cedar as well? Yeah, maybe a hint of cedar in there. Very, very nice, very, very fruity, both uh, dried, fresh, and dark. And then you got a nice, rich spice complement with chocolate, tobacco, and uh, maybe like a old oak or a cedar element on the back end. All right, let's get to the tasting. Well, wow, one thing, quick thing before I taste it. This actual bourbon actually won a double gold at last year's San Francisco World Spirits Competition. That's pretty impressive because in order to get a double gold, that means every judge had to give it a gold medal. So we're going to see why that is right now. Great viscosity. Above medium viscosity. Oh, that's nice bourbon. Very rich upon entry, very creamy and mouth coating. Red berries, red fruits, most feeling more dried now on the palate. Dried fruits, uh, you get those plums and that, um, you start getting the plum, you actually start getting the plum fig on the back end. But right up front, you get a lot of rush of dried fruits. Uh, you get that cinnamon, that clove, the mulling spices kind of swell on that mid palate. They never get hot, they just swell at a really nice layer of complexity. Uh, those red fruits are almost combined with a little, almost like a little maple syrup or a little brown sugar up front, making them feel very, very sweet and rich. Uh, red rope licorice type aspect to the whole thing. And then as that swell of spices and mulling spices kind of come down, you start falling right into some uh, dark chocolates, adding a, just a touch of bitterness to it, but not in the bad way, more complexity than bad. Uh, bitter chocolate. You start chewing on uh, the, the, the dark fruits, the raisins, the, the figs, the uh, plum type aspect to it. it starts coming on the back end, on the finish. Uh, underneath the chocolate, underneath the sweet tobacco leaf, uh, some old leather aspect to it, a little wisp of that cedar chest, and um, uh, the nice matured or sweet oak on the back end. Just All those are just carrying through a very, very long finish. Now, I think that's the genius thing about using a cognac finish on this bourbon, um, is that cognac is known for its long finish. So when you combine that with the uh, bold dried fruit and sweet rich characters of the sherry barrels that are in here you start creating a really nice forward note and then a really lengthy and complex finishing note um, and that's exactly what we're getting here if I was to taste this blind I would definitely give it a gold medal uh, but I would have thought the base would have been at least 15 years of age because of the the sweet matured oak on the back end um, 
without it being bitter or over oat. Just wonderful bourbon. Great to drink. If you see it out there, it's going to be retailing right around 100. I've seen it as high as 135 or so online. But it probably is not going to be found very far away from Washington, D.C. Because I imagine the majority of these are going to be bought up pretty much locally. Uh, but if you get a chance and you're in that area, I highly recommend you stop by their distillery because I hear they're going to be doing special releases, probably some distillery only single barrel type things, uh, small batches like 250 or so. So if you're in the area, definitely stop by, pick up a bottle of that. Don't be afraid to buy this if you see it on the shelf. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.